Welcome to ISU GenCam Lab Tutorials. In this lesson, we'll learn how to use a burette. We'll begin with the parts of the burette. At the very bottom is the tip, to which liquid flows out. Above the tip is the stopcock, which allows us to very carefully regulate the flow of the liquid. And above the stopcock is the barrel, which is marked with graduations. Notice at the very top of the barrel is a zero milliliter mark, and at the very bottom of the barrel is a 50 milliliter mark. Before we begin, it is good practice to first clean and then rinse the burette. To clean, we'll pour a few milliliters of deionized water into the barrel, making sure the stopcock is in the closed position. Then turn the burette into an almost horizontal position. The deionized water should then slowly flow towards the top of the barrel. Holding this position, rotate the burette, which will efficiently coat the insides of the barrel with the deionized water. After five or 10 seconds of doing this, let the rinsing water drain into our waste container, and then repeat this cleaning step with two additional small volumes of deionized water. Next, use your solution to rinse the burette in a process otherwise identical to the cleaning step. Repeat this rinsing process two additional times with small volumes of your solution. To fill the burette, you may choose to either pour your solution from your small container into the top of the barrel. Alternatively, you may decide to use a small funnel inserted into the top of the barrel to make this process a lot easier and certainly a lot less error prone. Either approach is perfectly okay, but if you decide to use the funnel, please remember to remove it before continuing. Once it is filled, secure the burette in the upright position using the burette clamp. We'll now take a closer look at the operation of the stopcock. Notice that when the stopcock is perpendicular to the barrel, it is fully closed. When the stopcock is parallel to the barrel, it is fully open. And when the stopcock is positioned in between parallel and perpendicular, we have fine control over the flow rate in the liquid. At this position, we have a nice slow drop by drop control. And if we turn the stopcock a little closer to parallel, we have a fine steady stream of liquid. Once again, a slight turn towards the perpendicular position allows us to resume the drop by drop control of the flow rate. We are now ready to read the initial volume of the burette. First, position yourself such that you are eye level with the meniscus to avoid parallax error. We see that the meniscus is between 5 and 6 milliliters. Further, it is between 5.6 and 5.7 milliliter marks. And finally, estimated to the hundredths place, I record the initial volume as 5.67 milliliters. After some of the liquid has drained out for the experiment, we're now ready to read the final volume of the burette. Meniscus is now between the 11 and 11.1 milliliter marks, and finally estimated at the hundredths place, I record the final volume as 11.04 milliliters. The volume delivered in my experiment then is the difference between these two readings, 11.04 and 5.67, or 5.37 milliliters. When we are finished with the burette, First, allow the solution to fully drain out of the burette, including the tip, and then clean it as before with two or three small volumes of deionized water. Finally, hang the clean burette upside down with the burette clamp, making sure that the stopcock is fully open to allow the burette to dry most efficiently. 